What is going on, friends? It's Colin, and uh, I posted a picture on Instagram today. I was cleaning up my uh, studio space, and there was a bunch of guitar picks laying around, um, all of which I have gigged with, um, some that I've played for, for quite a long time. And uh, I thought I would take a selection of them and just do like a blind demo shootout uh, just to show you how they differ and give you my thoughts on them. So as with anything when it comes to the guitar and tone and, you know, whether it's the pick you use, the, the strings you use, the guitar itself, uh, it's all subjective. So it's all about finding what works for you. And um, I've been primarily a finger picker for a lot of years. Um, that was my focus. You know, I strummed, you know, strum chords and stuff, but I wasn't like picking out any single note stuff on the guitar. Um, so when I switched over to doing more of that, because the connection with finger style to the guitar is so, you know, you're, you're just, it, it's very intimate and very personal. So finding a pick that, uh, that I felt comfortable with it, man, it's taken me a long time and one that I like the sound of too. And all of the picks that I'm going to talk about are over a mil thick. I prefer a thicker pick. I've just got into that zone and I can't get out of it now. When I pick up a, thing, a thinner pick that yields and, and flexes, it doesn't feel right. Um, but that being said, it might be right for you. You know, I've got here like a standard um, Tortex Orange, which is 0 0.60 mils and um, kind of has that clicky sort of flappy sound. You might like that. That might be for you. Um, I also have, uh, in the in the distant past, played uh, just, you know, your good old Yellers, the, the 0.73 Yellow Tortex. A little less flappy, a little more balanced. But when it gets into picking single note stuff, I still feel the flex in the pick, and, and I don't love that. So, anyway... Those might be right for you. I have lots of them laying around, and uh, I do teach guitar students, and usually I'll start them out on like a .6 or something, um, just just because it is forgiving when you're strumming. With a thicker pick, it's it's kind of like driving a manual car versus an automatic, where you know you have to put a put a bit more thought into um, you know the pressure you apply and, and your grip and all of that, and you have to have a lighter touch with those picks and when you're you know playing fast and so you have more control but it's a little bit more difficult and it's less forgiving so again thicker picks might not be for everyone and it depends on what you're going for but um, anyway i should get to these picks that i plan to demo so um the first one that will well i'm going to show them to you right now out of order and then i'm going to play them and then I'll reveal what they were afterwards. I'll do a bit of strumming, do a bit of picking. This is not an original idea. I've seen several other videos like this and better than this one. So <laughs> anyway, the first one is um, a Gator Grip Dunlop. So it's basically a Tortex pick with, uh, with like a beveled edge. And this is a 1.14 mil. So when you get into the Gator Grips, the color coding's different. Um, 1.14 mil Gator Grip. I have... A couple of the uh, of the Tortex T3 picks, which you know I'll try and get it up here close to the camera so you can see it. This is the black one. It's 1.35 mils, I believe, and um, it's got a sharp tip on it. And I also have um, a blue T3, and that is uh, that is the 1. 1.0. That's one mil with a sharp tip. And again, it's Tortex material. I also have a Dunlop Jazz 3 pick, really small, uh, pointed tip. And this is made out of carbon fiber, and it has their max grip texture on it, which is basically, it feels like cat tongue, and so it really sticks to your hands. And um, yeah, I have the good old-fashioned uh, purple Tortex which is your, your 1.14 and your standard Tortex. I have um, a couple of prime tone picks. And they're both the same thickness. They're both 1.13. One has the grip, the cat tongue on it, and is like translucent. And this one does not have the grip on it. 
but it is um, opaque and it has a slightly different feel and sound. So I'm going to demo both of these. And the prime tones are a little bit more expensive in that they cost like a couple of dollars a pick maybe. And they're beveled. They're, they're sculpted. And so what that means is that they have uh, like a, they come, you know, pre-sculpted with a bevel to, to make it release off the string smoother. Like the Gator Grip, although these ones are a little bit more shaped, if you will. Um, I have this uh, Ernie Ball Prodigy pick. I, I picked up some of those to try out. And this is in a 1.5 mil. And, and again, it's a, like a thinner pick with uh, with a sharp tip. And I'll put up a picture of all of these on, on my, uh, my sheet where I've sorted them numerically, which I do believe I've screwed up while I've been sitting here. And... Um, I also have this uh, this chicken picks pick that I wanted to try out, and this is a thick pick. It's 2.6 mils. It's an interesting one, and, and we'll talk about this a little bit, but uh, it's just the standard size chicken pick, 2.6, and uh, then I have a blue chip pick, which was a gift to me for Christmas from my wife, and that's a blue chip TD50. It's the teardrop shape. And um, it equates to about a 1.3 mil pick as well. So got the blue chip in the mix here. So yeah, I'm going to just strum a little something with each one of them. Then I'm going to pick something with each of them. And, you know, uh, I won't, you won't be able to see what pick I'm using. So you can kind of hear the differences without being biased. And then at the end, I'll, I'll talk about each one. And uh, my thoughts on the pick. And hopefully some of that's helpful to you. Helpful to you. So here's pick number one, strum a bit, and um, yeah, I'm just going to run through these. I'm not going to talk.
So that was 11 picks. Now, I will reveal what was what, and I'll give you my thoughts on these things. So the first one that I played was uh, the Tortex T3 1.0 mil. It's blue, pointy, uh, pointy tip. And what I like about this pick is uh, it doesn't have much flex. It's got maybe just a little bit to it, and uh, it's, it's a good balance between you know high end and and mid-range but ultimately um especially playing a lot of acoustic guitar i just found that the, the the pointed tip picks while they do help with your your single note picking um and articulation you just there's not as much pick that gets in contact with the string so i find that it scoops the mids a little bit although you know this is this is still one of my top picks. You know, if I grab one of these, it still feels good. Um, no issues. The, the second pick that I played was the, uh, the 1.35 version of the Tortex T3. And I like the feel of this one to hold on to. But uh, it's got a pretty soft feel against the strings. I do have um, an even thicker version of this. And I find that it's, it's trying to, like play the guitar with like a piece of soap or something. I don't really love it, but uh, with the thicker pick, you get a more mellow, mellow tone, I find, which I do like sometimes. So, you know, I'll still pick this one up from time to time and play it. The third pick that I played, and I was struggling with this because um, I haven't played one in a long time. I, this was the, the Jazz 3 Carbon Fiber with, uh, with the cat grip or the cat tongue grip on it. And I actually took 
one of these on tour. I played an entire tour, actually, my West Coast tour last year with a single um, carbon fiber Jazz 3 pick. And they're cool. Uh, they don't wear very much. They have a, an in interesting sound. But I like to move the pick around in my hands and palm it and play with my fingers and stuff. And I find that in a live situation, it's really hard to get the pick to move the way I want it to. So if you're the kind of person that kind of puts the pick in your hand and just leaves it there and it never moves, these do their job really well. But if you like to like move the pick around and maybe choke up on it sometimes and, and you know leave a little bit more pick exposed sometimes, they're hard to work around in your fingers. And that's my issue generally with, uh, with the grip technology of, uh, that Dunlop has. But again, if having a pick that you put in your hand and it just stays there, these are really good. And uh, they have a unique sound, so they, they could be f definitely be for you. And um, I got a, a bag of these that are unopened. So if you're interested and you want these, then hit me up because I, I have a few and that's all I need. <laughs> um, the next pick, number four, was uh, the good old purple Tortex, the 1.14. Great pick. Um, you know, pretty well balanced tone. You know, feels smooth. And uh, I have no issues with this pick. Pick number five was the blue chip TD50. And again, I was given this as a gift. We're going to do a rundown of what my favorites are at the end. But um, pick number five was the blue chip. And pick number six was actually the blue chip as well. Um, the first part I just played with, uh, with the more pointed tip, although it's still round-ish. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, it's not pointed. It's just, just your standard teardrop, like a standard Tortex. And then I played with the round edge as well. Um, these are expensive. They're like 35 US dollars a pick. It was given to me as a gift. Got to get your money's worth. So played it both ways. Hey there, I thought I would just jump in from the future with a bit of a, a philosophical update. And in listening back to this, all these recordings while I was editing the video, you know, the picks that are kind of in the middle among my favorites, they all sound very similar and it's tough to, to discern those differences. I find that listening to the recordings, it's easy to tell the picks that have more extreme tonal differences. But I think that that's, uh, but when I'm playing them, it, it's very different. And I think that's because, you know, for a couple of reasons. One, you're sitting right on top of the guitar as you're playing it. And the heart of the sound is being projected forward. And you're experiencing a lot more of like sort of the nuance that goes on around the edges of the sound, if you will. So you're going to perceive those sonic differences a little bit more as the player. But I also think that tone there's a tactile component to how we experience the tone of the guitar we're playing that it's inextricably linked from the audio so if a pick feels great then we're going to have a more favorable perception of the tone versus you know it can sound great to the listener out there but if the pick doesn't feel good then then our perception as a player is is impacted by that and you know, i think it's kind of like if if you hear somebody hitting a bunch of golf balls or baseballs a lot of those are going to sound very similar but if you're the one hitting the golf balls or the baseballs like the feel of when you hit it right on the sweet spot is different and and you're going to perceive how that sounds differently as well i think who knows but anyway we'll get back to revealing those picks um so the next two picks were the Dunlop Prime Tones. The first one was the translucent version. And they're both 1.3 mils, but I played them both because I find that the translucent one with the with the grip on it wears in a little bit more. Or maybe it's just because it's translucent and I can see it. But it seems to have kind of broken in faster and better so that it has a smoother release off the strings. <laughs> Versus the um, the one that is uh, doesn't have the grip and is totally opaque, and it has a, like a more plasticky feel to it, almost like it wants to bounce off the strings or something sometimes. Anyway, 
sounds good, feels good. Like these are like minute little details. All these picks are fine. Um, the next one was the 1.14 mil Gator Grip pick, and um, I I really like this one as well. It comes with uh, it's not like a sculpted bevel like the um, like the Prime Tones have. It's just kind of rounded off all the way around, uh, sort of so that it kind of rounds up to a point and. It's nice and balanced. Uh, it has a softer feel to it, both on the fingers and on the strings. So if I'm going for something more mellow, then uh, I'll use this pick. And uh, again, doesn't flex much. The the next pick that I, I used was, I guess this would have been number ten, was the uh, Ernie Ball Prodigy, the 1.5 mil. And this one fits really nicely. You know, when I try it, when I palm the pick. It's a little bit slimmer, and it is also a beveled pick with a point. Now, I find that it is like a softer feeling material as well, uh, even softer than, than the Tortexes. So it has like a, a, a round, warm sound to it when you're strumming, even though it has like a pretty sharp point on it. I just find that when I'm picking single line stuff, um, I, it has a soft feel, and you may like that. Um, I don't. I like a little bit more of a snappier feel on the strings, personally. Um, but I was in a recording session earlier this year, last last year, and I was strumming something, and it required like a more mellow tone. And I, I had taken a selection of picks with my with me to the studio, and that wound up being the one that we used. So it, it is useful. It is just not one that I use every day. And the, the last pick, uh, number 11, was the chicken pick. And this is an interesting one. So it is you know, 2.6 mils thick. It is a thick pick, but it has this, this major bevel to it and very sharp from the side. Like the edge is, um, you know, quite sharp. And as a result... <laughs> The, the pick just glides across the strings effortlessly. Whether you're strumming... I don't even know what I'm doing. But anyway, very, very smooth and very smooth release. It, it has just a little bit of a scratchiness to the release, which I, I like, actually. But the thing about this pick is the sound of it. And out of everything that I played, this has, to me, to my ear anyway, the most unique tone. And um, there's like this almost a metallic scratchiness to it. And it reminds me of playing with a coin. Um, and if that's something that you like the idea of, or you like the sound of, like Brian May from Queen, I think, famously used a... a I don't know the denomination of the coin, but I know he used a coin to play. And so if that's something that you like, these are more on the expensive side. They're like 10 bucks a pick, I think, and at least here in Canada. Everything else is like sub, you know, two a dollar or two a piece. And most of them you can get in um, any of the Tortexes or the Gator Grips. You can get in packs for, uh, you know, well under a dollar a pick. So anyway, this is a unique one still you know mess around with it from time to time but I don't again don't use this every day because the sound that it generates isn't the sound that I'm going for myself but if it's the sound that you're going for I can I can confirm that these feel awesome and I wish that it it made the sound that I wanted but uh, it just doesn't kind of so uh, on an electric guitar that would probably come across less it would impact the tone less um, I have used it on electric but I don't I haven't gigged it on an electric guitar Anyway, cool picks. If you like the sound of it in this video, then they're worth checking out. So that's all of them. Now, the, what's the verdict? What are my favorites? What are, the, what are the ones that I play all the time? Well, there's basically two now that I play with any regularity, and one of them's like way out ahead of everything. So number two is the uh, 1.14 mil Gator Grip. I find it's balanced. As I just said, it has a soft feel, but... Um, 
it just feels just slightly smaller just because of the rounded off edge than a regular Tortex pick. And I've had good luck with it. And they're like, I don't know how much they cost, but you can get like a 12 pack of them for six bucks or something at the music store. So very economical and my second favorite. So if you're on a real tight budget and uh, you're looking for something to try out and you like a thicker pick, these are worth it. Great value. Any tort, you can't go wrong with any Tortex. I just happen to like the Gator Grip. I like them coming with that bev bevel right out of the gate. But number one is the Blue Chip TD50. Um, my wife got this for me as a gift for Christmas. And she kind of asked me, okay, I'm not going to try and buy you anything um, as a surprise because I have no idea. You get whatever you want. And I don't have expensive taste. I'm a value person. So, uh, you know, I get something and I keep it for a long time or use it for a long time. So these are 35 US dollars a pick for those of you that aren't familiar with them. And that may seem scandalous. And it did to me. And then I got it and I didn't want to like it as much as I do, but I do. Um, when you first pick up the pick, it's got like this sort of sticky feel to it. Like just, just in that it, it just fits in your hand, it sits there, and it doesn't move, and it, as it warms up, it almost like melts into your hand. It feels amazing. Um, I've had, I have not played an authentic tortoise shell pick myself, I don't think. Unless I played one when I was way younger, you know, um, and I didn't have any idea what I was doing or what I was playing. That being said, uh, I do have friends, a number of friends that have played tortoise shell, and they say that the blue chip comes closest to, to authentic tortoise shell as they've they've experienced. And that's not to say that they played every pick out there. I haven't, they haven't. It is what it is, right? Your, your mileage may vary. But uh, it comes real close to tortoise shell and it doesn't wear out. Um, I've played this pick now for hundreds and hundreds of hours. Um, you know, I've had it for almost seven months. And there have been days where I've played this thing 10 hours. So, you know, you do the math, many hours, and it's barely showing any signs of wear on the picking edge. Like, there's some scuff marks on it from taking it out of my pocket and putting it in my pocket. But it's really durable, and um, it sounds amazing. It feels amazing. And part of the reason I use this Martin guitar for the demos is because the Boucher has real new strings on it, or newer strings, and it, man, you can hit that thing with whatever, and it sounds good, so this Martin shows the differences in the picks a little bit better. But with the blue chip, uh, you know, having played this, nothing else feels quite right anymore, and um, so I wound up actually buying myself a second one as a backup, because if I lose this one, I don't wish to live without it. So, yes, it's expensive, but if you look at it, if you buy, you know, a really nice guitar, and by nice, I don't necessarily mean price-wise, just a guitar that you really like the sound of and you're a picker, then, you know, you wouldn't buy a really nice violin and then necessarily settle for, you know, a cheap dollar store bow. Not that I've seen violin bows at the dollar store but you know you know what i'm saying so it i love it it is the best but there are inexpensive alternatives that offer great sound and good value and i think i've gone through some of those here so if you have any questions leave them in the comments and i'll uh, i'll be happy to uh, to give you my thoughts and you know this is almost like a religious discussion right like some people are like yellow tortex is all you'll ever need and um, you, you can accomplish a lot with those but it doesn't feel nor sound as good as this to my ear and uh, the main thing about guitar is um, does this make me a better guitar player not you know when I first picked it up it actually took it made me worse for a little bit because it's different but the way you get better at guitar is to to play more and to, to play in an inspired way so it doesn't matter how much the guitar costs. If you can't resist picking it up and playing it when you see it, then that's the guitar for you. And uh, it's going to make you better because, again, like um, you're going to be inspired. 
And the blue chip made me better because it, it, it felt right. It was the feel that I, I was missing. So, you know, since I got it, my flat picking's gotten better. But that's just because I love the just the, the, the process of playing the damn guitar with it and, and learning and, and whatnot. And the prime tones were like that for, for a few months before I got the blue chip. And, you know, when I made the change and tried out like the 1.14 mil gator grip, same thing. Like, oh, this is new and I like this. And this is an improvement over over what I was playing before. And it's been kind of a progression. And all of these have made it on the stage with me. So I, I like them all. You can't go wrong. But in my opinion, you know, if you like nice things and you don't lose picks, you can buy an awful lot of picks looking for the one. And for me, the blue chip was the one. So, and I've certainly spent more than 35 US dollars experimenting with other picks. So, what can I tell you? This has been a long ass video and only the hardcore guitar nerds are still here. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.